Hello there. I guess it's week two of opals, and today I'm going to be faceting that more colorful opal, which I've already got embedded in the wax and level. Not sure if it's where I want it yet, but we will check that here. I'm going to use the same dop size as last time because they're a similar size stone. And this is the smallest dop that I have, which is about two millimeters or so, since I didn't remove as much matrix from this side. I'm going to keep the dop just a little bit over that way, but because the wax, I can move the wax wherever I want to, eyeball it here. Could probably do some measurements and mark the exact center. I'm also not sure how much else I'm going to be losing as I facet and get rid of some of that matrix, but we'll see. And now that I have this centered, I'm going to use super glue again. And I'm not going to use quite as much as last time just to see if this holds on without going crazy with the super glue. When I cut this little pear the other day, which wound up at about just under five by seven, when I did the crown anyway and had it glued on the pavilion, I really only used a couple drops of super glue and that held tight during the entire cutting and polishing of the crown. We'll see, this is a little bit bigger than that one wound up being. It'll be an experiment. And the trouble with doing a voiceover on the previous video is that I forgot to talk about a couple of things, including opal being really tough to facet well in terms of having a design that shows off its color and brightness, and especially in terms of returning light. Opal has a low refractive index somewhere in the range of 1.5. 4.3 to 1.47, but it can be as low as 1.37, whereas quartz is what I would consider to be on the low end of gemstones. Quartz has a refractive index of 1.54, and even that can be tough to get a good light return in some respects. It's interesting. It doesn't even look like the dop is touching. The opal is so transparent and the glue is warping things. The opal's in the handpiece of the Raytech Shah, and we're ready to go. I've got it at the angle I need to get started here. I'm gonna start on a 360 topper. It's fairly worn in, so it's not quite as coarse as a fresh 360 would be. Even though this is a small stone, I wanted to go quick. And what I'm gonna try is Scott Labori's Clock Tower, which is available on the gemologyproject.com website. It's going to be kind of a shallow stone. I think I'm gonna be able to cut a four millimeter across plus or minus stone. Unfortunately, that means the height is only going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of three, two and a half to three millimeters. So we are going to lose a bit of height on the stone. I really should probably just do a rose cut where it's just a basically a faceted dome on the top. I don't know, I kind of want to try it in a faceted design, see how it looks. And I still got some, you know, matrix to cut away and all that. Here's the opal at a first pass and the 360 just starting to cut things to a center point. You can see it's a little bit oblong left to right. Maybe an oval would be a better shape, but I'll just stick to my round design here. And there's still just a little bit of matrix in a couple of the pavilion facets. So I'll either have to cut down a little bit, but before I waste too much uh, material going down, I think I'll cut in the girdle facets and just see what we have left and what we would need to cut out and then kind of compromise between cutting down versus cutting in to make a smaller stone, because I think I'll have enough uh, vertical space where I can cut down if I need to. Now this is about as large as the stone could possibly be. I cut in starting at the side closest to the dop and just went around in a circle, cutting in roughly where they should be. And you can see there's still some potch around the edges. On the top right there, there's about a half millimeter or so that I would have to cut in. And unfortunately, I think I will have to cut that in. So kind of like I thought, this might be around a four millimeter stone. But I think now might be a good time to switch over to the 600 grit disc that I'm going to use, which is a Raytex Shaw resin bonded 600 disc. It's fairly worn in, so it cuts very slow relative to my 600 grit topper disc but it does leave a much nicer finish and I can go straight to polish from this. Now, the only thing with the resin bonded discs is that they require a lot of water is my understanding. So I'm gonna to have to kind of flood it and things make it a little bit messy. You can see from the previous opal that I cut that the backsplash is 
a little bit dirtier than it normally would be at this point in the, the cutting process. Pokey, is it lunchtime? So feed the cats and then get back to work. polished up and I'm gonna feel a little bad cutting out all of this excess opal down at the bottom but we gotta do what we gotta do and what we gotta do is what I want to do which is cut a design well I just did something that I haven't done in quite a while so it's probably overdue but it's unfortunate that it happened with this stone where that little facet that's lit up on the bottom, that's a little triangle. I've been making those by cutting in these two larger facets and I totally misindexed and that's the right side. And I accidentally made that tall skinny pyramid and that little rhombus at the bottom is where the triangle is supposed to be. And I just went in and cut the other side, but you can see I've got kind of a problem here. The girdle is already pretty thin. It's about 0.3 millimeters, which is, I don't really want to go smaller than that. So I can either leave it and see how it looks when I cut everything in, which is what I'll probably do as I go around. I was a little more than halfway cutting in those facets. Or I can lower the angle of these facets that are lit up here. They're supposed to be at 35. I could go to 37 or something, or I could cut down everything, recut it basically, and lose even more girdle, which I really don't want to do because then I lose more color and all that. They say that the misindexed angles cut the fastest and like that burned through that facet real quick. You know, opal is a soft stone. It's about a, maybe a six on the hardness scale. So it cuts fast anyway. It's been going pretty slow on my worn in 600 resin lap, but that one went real fast. I think what I'll do is just keep going forward, see how it looks when it's all said and done. And if I have to basically repeat that mistake, I misindex this one at 32 or at, I put it at 36 where it's supposed to be at 32. I guess I read the wrong line on my facet diagram and I can just go back and I can just make that mistake a few more times basically or see what I need to do to make it a little more symmetrical so it doesn't look like a horrible mistake. That miscut wound up looking like a little square which isn't too bad so I think I'll just leave it like that and cut that in on the other sides which will be between these points here and we'll just have four little extra squares sitting around the outside of the stone here. 